I grew up in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, Southern Baptist family. Uh, we were strong in the church. We were totally engaged and involved. That's the environment where I grew up. I became a Christian when I was a young teenager. It was just an integral part of my life. Well, I get to college, and during the first semester, um, part of the science requirements were taking biology and organic chemistry and that kind of stuff, and it started to become clear to me that there was something more to this evolution stuff than just a big hoax by scientists who wanted to turn everybody into atheists. And at about the same time, you know, here I am at a Christian university and I'm taking all these classes. I was being challenged even in the religion department on some assumptions that I had about what the biblical story really is. I mean, literally, I woke up one day and just announced to my roommate, I don't think I believe this anymore. That seemed like the most intellectually honest thing to do. I wanted it to be true. As a matter of fact, I told friends that I wish I had never taken those classes because I feel like they took something away from me that I can't get back. It's like waking up and having an alien grab you off the, the world that you just know is flat and show you from a distance, no, it's round. You can't undo that. But I finally sort of found Buddhism, particularly Zen Buddhism, very comfortable. And it doesn't require you to believe anything. That was always my hang up. You know, I can't believe the earth is 10,000 years old. So I finally settled into this version of religion that didn't demand that I believe anything. And I could carry on with my science. When my mom died, at 59 years old, that was a really difficult time for me because I looked around and I saw my family and all of my old friends comforting each other and praying for each other. And even my, my dad, you know, grieving the loss of his wife, there was a part of him that said, I know she's with God now. And I wanted that so bad. I mean, it just, I couldn't explain it to them, but I was really, really pissed off. I'm in Colorado where I meet this woman. We'd been working at UC together for a couple of years, but I'd never actually had a conversation with her. And I don't remember exactly how it came up, but she mentioned something about her church. We started having conversations about, you know, God and, and science and faith. And she told me that her church crossroads was having this um, wrestling series, you know, and talking about big questions and big issues. And um, she said, oh, oh, Stephen, you've, you've got to come tomorrow. This guy was a professor at UC. His name's Keith Crutcher. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Keith Crutcher is talking. And so I, I actually went with her the next day. Um, Admittedly, and I've told Keith this, admittedly, so that I could make fun of him the next time I saw him, you know, so I could razz him a little bit. I sat there and I listened to this guy, Keith, that I respected immensely. And he's asking a lot of the same questions that I had asked for years, but he came to radically different conclusions. And I really wanted to dig into that because one of us has to be wrong. I think we're both pretty smart and we can't both be right, right? And it suddenly, I think within a few days afterwards, it sort of dawned on me that the thing that Keith was saying was something that I intellectually knew. I had been asking for more or less scientific evidence of God. There were many times during those years that when I, when I was going through a rough period, I would just pray. I, I would say, God, if you exist, please just come down here and show me so that I can go back to believing in you. And what Keith was saying is, yeah, he, God may do that occasionally, but more of the time he's talking to you on a different level. He's talking outside of that realm where science operates. And so I, I, I thought, all right, I'll... I'll give that at least a little bit of a chance. I was still very skeptical. But over the next couple of weeks, the more I sort of opened up to that possibility, 
the more amazing things started happening in my life. So the next Sunday, Bernadette and I come back here and, uh, and I just very quietly prayed, you know, okay, all right, I give. You know, I'm gonna try doing it your way. I'm gonna try, you know, having you in my life. And, and if, if, you know, if you wanna speak to me in that empirical way that I can really understand, or, you know, basically if you wanna to talk to me, you talk to me when you're ready. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the first move. And literally, within seconds, I mean, I could feel it in my gut, just as plain as day, just as loud as possible on the inside. It said, he said, you dumbass, I never left. You just stopped listening to me. And I, I was floored. And it, it just, it all of a sudden became so amazingly clear that it wasn't all the, all the problems with creation science. It was that I had let go of that internal faith and was relying on this empirical methodology that I even knew intellectually could never solve the problem. I am experiencing an unbelievable level of freedom. It didn't happen immediately, but absolutely. I absolutely have a peace about life, a comfort about life that I hadn't had since I was 19 years old. I would say that the notion that science and faith cannot peacefully exist, peacefully coexist, is just, is, is really false. And if evolution or the origins of life are one of those things that you struggle with, um, I would say, you know, give God the chance to talk to you in a way that you might talk to someone in your family. You know, I know that I love my dad and I know my dad loves me. It's not possible to prove either of those things using science. It's just not. 